Hey, it's the 1st of February. Can you believe it? Valentine's Day is just a short 13 days away. Have you got your candies for the girl? Have you got your little Home Depot gift card for the man? Yeah, it's going to be a big day. The month of love, 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 love. Well, God originated love. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Read all about it. Read all about it. Extra, extra. Late edition. Final copy. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, kind, gentle. Does not seek its own. And so... Today's word, though, is application. That's right, application. And that means the, 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 the putting into practice of the things that we preach about, we talk about, we know. And it's not always easy because if I do one thing, there's people all around who have different opinions. There's not any two human beings. That's right, no, two human beings. How many? Two human beings. There's not any two human beings that are exactly the same. So if I apply something and what I sincerely believe is, is right and true, somebody may not agree. They just may not agree. There's police departments all over the country that are trying to apply law enforcement strategies that they were trained with, and yet they're facing a lot of criticism. And in some cases, of course, they're just outrageous. The guy who sat there and shot the guy in the back seat, and as a girl said, please don't shoot him, mister, please don't. That was like, obviously, like, sometimes, you know, officers are human beings. But what about in friendships? Someone does something and they want to they wanna do the right thing, but somehow they just, they just mess it up. Well, that happens. And uh, then it's time to apply the grace, the mercy, the kindness, the gentleness, the self-control, the mercy, the salvation. So if you have someone who's, who's pointing boiny fingers or someone who's, who's upset with you, then it's time for you then to apply the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the self-control. We aren't puppets to anybody. We're nobody's puppet. Even God does not expect us to be a puppet to him. Well, I told you, and you know the manipulations and the the uh, the ways that people can try to try to. It does work, you know. There's there's definitely uh, whenever I see that giant sheriff's uh, or you know, sheriff's greyhound bus that drives by, I think, boy. You know, it's, it scares me to death. And I thought about this one. I thought, wow, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Once you start to, to have that fear and then you apply yourself, you go, wow, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be right now. I'm going to be appropriate. I'm going to make sure that I do, I'm going to straight, I'm going to fly, I'm going to fly on the straight and narrow here. I'm not going to be doing any, anything, uh, you know, that isn't exactly right because wow, you know, you gotta, you gotta do right. You know, it's just important. And that's a, that's a good application. It's a very good application of God's truth. Are you applying the principles and the truths that you know from God's Word in your marriage, in your friendships, in your schoolwork, in your being a good grandparent, being a, you know, I, just now I was there and uh, one of the tiniest ones in the family, I kept pushing, pushing on me and they literally kind of pushed me over because I, I just, I fell over. They, they thought it was the funniest thing in the world and so, you know, we took three or four more turns of pushing me down. I mean, this little two-year-old, if I wanted to stand there, there's no way they could ever, and I could, you know, they never. But I had some fun. I applied some some fun time with the, with the young one, and was able to. You know, and Mama was watching and going, you know, and <clears throat> so it was it was a good time. I applied what I knew, and in negotiations, uh, Doctor Phil in the book Life Life Code. That's right, Life Code. Doctor Phil talks about how life is all about negotiation. Life is all about what? That's right, negotiation. We need to negotiate everything. Everything needs to be negotiated. Everything needs to be to be looked at through the lens of Am I applying what I'm hearing? Am I sensitively caring about what I'm hearing? Uh, it's important. So today, let's go ahead and do that. Today, let's go ahead and let's let's make ourselves people who are not just hearers of the word, 
but doers of the word as well. We want to be doers. And people were upset with Jesus because Lazarus was very sick. People were real upset with Jesus. This is Jesus Christ. This is the Lord of heaven. This is our model of God's presence on the earth. And you know what Jesus did? He did nothing. And Lazarus died. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Talk about not, applic not applying your skills. You know, Jesus, he... was God and man. Jesus, he had all power. At the same time, he was submitted to God's will. He was submitted to the voice of the Holy Spirit. See, just because we have money and power does not mean that we can just run around recklessly. No, we need to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. There's people on every corner in Los Angeles Every corner. I saw a guy a day or two ago, and this fella, he had a little fiddle. He was he was fiddling, and it, it was awesome, man. The guy, the guy sounded really good. You know, and he was talking to people. I watched him. You know, I was kind of far away, but I watched him. I thought, well, that guy's amazing. You know, he, uh, he was just amazing. But there's a lot of homeless people that just sit there, and they just rake in the dough. You know, they're just raking it in. And there's been actual stories of some of these homeless people. They live in Beverly Hills. They have nice condos. They go around in vans. They just drop them off on the corners. And they're just raking it. They're making more money than you and me. It's just crazy. <coughs> when I worked in the Skid Row ministry, and I did that for a while, a long while, uh, they were very clear to us. They said, I don't care what the hard luck story is. You never, ever, ever, did I say ever? Never, 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 ever, ever give them anybody money. No money is to be given to these people. Never. That seems kind of harsh. But the thing is, is that cash, you know, moolah, pull out the, pull out the bills, throw them the coins, that can be translated to anything. That can help them with their addiction, with their alcoholism, with their coke habit, with their meth habit. They can buy a prostitute. They can do whatever they want without cash. And that's not going to help them. That's just going to encourage them to still be on the street. But if you plug them into the Dream Center, or if you plug them into a local church, or if you give them a gift card to McDonald's, let's say, you know, just get, just buy a stack of $5 gift cards. I've seen people do that. They walk in and they got a stack of $5 gift cards, as many as they can afford, you know, because uh, I could give away everything I own to feed the poor, but what good is that going to do? It's not going to do any good at all without love. And without God, God is love. Without God involved, it's just, see, God put a gift in me, God put a gift in you. How we apply our gifts, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. How we apply our gifts, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. How we apply our gifts, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. We've got to apply the Word of God with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, you know, people can judge us, not that anybody would, but you know, some people could say, well, you know, I don't know why that guy is driving that swift truck in the number, number three lane. He should be in the number four lane. He's wrong. Any decent truck driver knows you shouldn't be in the number three lane. It's the number four lane. Well, Maybe there's a reason why. Maybe maybe there's a policy with this company. And either lane is fine. You know, the three or four lanes, fine. If he's in the carpool lane, not so good. That's not such a good idea. But, you know, any of those two right-hand lanes, those are fine. Jesus, he didn't come and see Lazarus. He just sat on, he just sat on the, on the need of Lazarus. He didn't, he didn't come and see his brother Lazarus. What's up with that, Jesus? I mean, you just sat there. You didn't. You didn't meet the need of Lazarus. You let him die. He was stinking in the grave. Jesus, that's not very nice. That's not very good, Jesus. What kind of Lord are you letting your friend Lazarus die? And the family grieved. And everybody in the community was weeping. And, and, and Jesus just let all that happen? That doesn't seem very much like it's very Christian. We're criticizing the Lord now, are we? Yeah, that's what we're doing. 
theoretically. Because we know the story. We know that the actual reality was, was that Jesus had a plan. Jesus knew what he was doing. Jesus was told by God to stay put. Just, just be still. And then when he got there, he said, Do you not know, Martha, that I am the resurrection and the life, and that whosoever believe in me, although he die, will not perish, but have everlasting life? Isn't that incredible? And then Jesus said, Fellas, roll the stone away. And they said, But Lord, it's going to stink. You think you think the dogs poo on the on the on the kitchen floor because he got you know that's it. no this is death you know you you smelled rotten meat before raw you know something someone left something out or the refrigerator and ugh, there's nothing worse than that it's the worst smell in the world so they're telling Jesus saying Jesus what are you doing Lord yeah you know, this is wrong you're wrong you couldn't do this Jesus don't you dare don't you dare roll that stone away Lord that's not right. Now, I don't agree with you, Lord. I, but nobody said that. They, they, did, they did talk to him. They did tell him. But then Jesus stood there and said, Lazarus, come forth. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, here comes old Hopalong. <coughs> Just dawned on me why, why maybe the rabbit is a good theme for Easter. The rabbits are very prolific in their life. And the, uh, the rabbits, they hop. It's like Lazarus. So we're reminded that, that you just hop, 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 even in your bedclothes, even bound up in your, in your sin, bound up in your, in your problems, bound up in your mental capacities. Some of these people can't get out of their own minds. They think that what they think is, is, is the bomb. What I'm thinking is the bomb. What I know, what I understand, what I'm thinking, that is it. Well, yes and no. One day we will be facing God and we'll face the judgment. That'll be the final judgment. In this life, there's a lot of, there's a lot of judgments that are made judgment calls we talked about that before <clears throat> and you have to apply what you know you have to apply your heart people have feelings I have a family member that's a gifted gifted spiritual woman of God and she has feelings and, and she goes through feelings and many times she's absolutely right and we all have that sense of intuition back to Dr. Phil hey Phil love you buddy uh, yeah, Dr. Phil, he said, he says that um, you need to trust your intuition. You need to trust your intuition. And he gave a whole long story of a gal who had this, in, I think it was David, uh, David DeBecker. Uh, I think David DeBecker, he's another guy that's really, really awesome. But you got to trust, you got to trust what God put in you. And Maybe it's wrong. Maybe maybe it was the chili you ate. Maybe uh, you just have some trauma from your childhood. I've been traumatized a lot in my life. And um, I was there at my small group last night, and I looked over at my friend, my, my friend, uh, Mr. B, another Mr. B. And he, I looked at him, I said, you know, you know, brother, your dad is dead. His dad was my therapist for years and years and years. And, but your dad's dead, but you know what, you're here. I looked over and I went over, I just said, thank you so much, B, thank you so much. I was so, so blessed to be with him. Well, listen, be with us. Come on out on February the 11th, Saturday. Join us at the historic Casa del Green Camp above the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, 4 p.m. Please come, everybody come on out. It's my church experience. I'm not able to get to church right now, so when I have these little fellowships on Saturday, it means a lot to me if you'd come out. I appreciate it. You can call me at 213-713-8954, 8954greenatt.net, on the Twitter at Mr. Bob, at Bob Bob 8954 And remember, if you just accepted Jesus Christ, your Savior today, get to that Bible-believing church. Start talking to other people about Jesus. And remember, tune in to Pasadena Bomb Devotional on YouTube. That's Pasadena Bomb Devotional on YouTube. I'll see you in a few. Love you.